Literally 30 seconds ago, before I started talking now, I suddenly felt this beeping sound in my left ear. Um, it's called tinnitus. So I just, I felt it now in my left ear and now it's gone away. Or has it gone away? You don't know. Is it just because you're now used to it so you don't recognize it anymore? Do you ever like have like some kind of a health issue? You, you notice there's a clicking in your knee, you notice your left shoulder might be might be sore or you like uh, after you've made a number two you notice maybe your 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 feces is not looking so good and i think i think we we i think if you're like me you just ignore these things and um i think that's just human nature we, we don't we ignore all these small health issues because you're worried. Uh, you don't want to be a, accused of being a, a hypochondriac. And uh, I was looking at this uh, this whole thread on uh, Twitter yesterday about how women, especially women, are ignored by doctors. They get it. They get accused that they are hysterical, and especially um, elderly women are ignored. And then people gave all these examples. My grandmother, this and that, she was ignored. Turned out she had a tumor the size of a grapefruit in her pelvis. It was ovarian cancer and um, e endless stories like that. People, my my mother complained about uh, this. And in the end, after being ignored, after six months, she, she they, they finally they diagnosed that she needed a hip replacement. You know, it's it's tricky. You get to, there's a, a healthy balance. So I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna ignore my tinnitus just for now. I heard it, beep, you know, like it's a mosquito. And um, I'll just monitor monitor it slowly. Remember, I, I, I had my knee checked out a, a month or two ago. You know what? Remember, my knee was feeling a bit wobbly, and then the orthopedic surgeon told me never to run ever again. So I've been running. You know that my knee feels better. You know that my knee feels better since I carried on running. Go figure. Look, we don't know. I don't know whether it's the right thing to do. I, what can you do? You know, you got to weigh up blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, um, averse knee replacement. Maybe we got to control the former and, you know, deal with the, the latter, the knee, repla the knee replacement, maybe 10, 20 years' time. We'll see. We'll see. I mentioned... Uh, uh, the mosquitoes uh, a moment ago. Mazel tov to China. Uh, well done, China. Um, China just announced, uh, or should I say the World Health uh, um, Organization. Who? The World Health Organization. Who? The World Health Organization. Oh, WHO. Who? They, uh, they, they, uh, they said mazel tov. Uh, they said well done to China. They've eradicated malaria in China. No more malaria in China. Not a not a case of malaria. So that's pretty that's pretty awesome. Well done, China. Uh, I wish we could do the same. So many, so many. I think five million people a year, maybe more, die of malaria, and it's a, a lot of them. The majority of them are children. Can't, that five million. I might be wrong about that because I read the story and then I, uh, it said mainly children under five years old. So I may have the five years old mixed up with the five million. I know that I'm right about the five year old figure. So I'm not sure about the five million. So just just bear with me. Yeah, look, mistakes happen. Like yesterday, yesterday, oh, embarrassing. I made a big mistake. I made two big mistakes. England uh, and Germany with the mm -hmm. soccer. Turns out that England has beaten Germany a, a, a few, a numerous times since 1966. Mm -hmm. So there, I don't, so then I don't understand. So what's the big? Look, it's a big deal. It is a big deal, but not as big a deal as I thought it was. So let's just calm down. Calm down. Calm down. And then I went into this whole explanation about diabetes yesterday. And then I went to go fetch Rufus. By the way, Rufus, my mini, the miniature schnauzer, the blind one, except he can now see in the in the left eye. So 
the the vet and the vet is going over the whole thing he's drawing graphs he's showing me the glucose or this or and then i realized as he's explaining this to me about rufus's uh, diabetes i then realized there was a suddenly there was a light bulb in fact i think the vet actually saw the light bulb because he suddenly like took a bit of a um looked a bit surprised the big light bulb i suddenly realized i, I completely screwed up the whole diabetes explanation Quickly about Rufus before I go into my embarrassing mistake. Rufus, so we just got to increase his, his uh, insulin a bit. He's got he's to have, instead of five units on the syringe, he's got to have seven units. So let's see how that goes. Let's see if we can push him. Let's see if we can push him stronger and maybe he can beat the other dogs. Maybe he can be the, maybe he can be the longest surviving diabetic miniature schnauzer, possibly in the northeastern suburbs of Johannesburg um, and the son of Jewish parents. That, that's the category. Kind of like, like the Maccabi games of, mini, of just miniature schnauzers. So it's, it's a very niched category. You know, because like we, 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 we're like that character from, uh, from that Ben Stiller movie, meet, meet the Parents or Meet the Fuckers, where, you know, he, he, he had the, the, uh, um, all the, the medals and stuff was on the wall, but it was for fifth place and just completing. And so Rufus, you'll, you'll, hopefully you'll win that category. Sh should I repeat it in case you weren't concentrating? So the longest surviving, the strongest, uh, male miniature schnauzer under 10 kilograms parents, uh, um, as the son of Jewish parents in the Northeastern suburbs of Johannesburg. Oh, salt and pepper, salt and pepper category. That's the color of the miniature schnauzer because there's, you get other kinds of miniature schnauzers. You get black miniature schnauzer, silver and black. Anyway, I'm not going to bore you about miniature schnauzers. So, very briefly, to, to correct my, my embarrassing mistake. Glucose. Glucose is sugar. You know, glucose in the blood. It's then glucose. So the pancreas releases insulin. Insulin then converts glucose into glycogen and glycogen is stored glucose so if you don't if you're not producing enough insulin your blood glucose levels will be too high but there's other mechanisms of diabetes where it's your pancreas is producing f insulin fine but for some reason it's just the the insulin is not being up is not being taken in by the cells has been blocked and it can't get converted into glycogen that's the other the other version and then there's another then there's, your body produces glucagon i think i think your kidneys produce glucagon and glucagon convert converts glycogen into glucose Whew. and and that's very making it that's very simplified version and then what's happening now with COVID-19, there's been some research and they are, they are concerned that COVID-19 is actually causing diabetes in young children or young adults. And if you've already got diabetes, it's even worse because the COVID-19 is um, disabling or interfering with your pancreatic cells uh produce to produce insulin sure that was complicated eh? i hope i hope you still i hope you're still listening after that do you find you've been overwhelmed by the poppy act uh, emails poppy act uh, um sms's and pop poppy act poppy 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 so some people they're sending you emails they're saying listen yeah poppy act uh, you need to give permission for people to have your information and you must opt in or opt out if you ignore the email it means you will continue getting um uh, messages from people it's like so-called spam i think this also involves call centers people who phone you hello is that mr day I, I answer the phone i say i say hello damon speaking then there's silence then there's silence and then I say, hello, Damon speaking again. Then there's more, and there's talking. Hello, is that Mr. Damon? And then I said, and I say, yes. That's why I answered the phone and I said, 
Hello, Damon speaking. And then there's this like, eh, eh, eh. anyway, I, I feel sorry for these people. They, you know, they, this is their job. Anyway, they're trying to sell, they're trying to sell, it's mainly tracking devices on the car. It's, can I interest you in, can one of our financial advisors get hold of you? So they want a financial advisor. There's, in, it's, it's, it's insurance. And can we help you get out of your debts? But that not, not so much that. That's mainly just SMSs. Anyway, what's going to happen to that industry? What is going to happen to that industry? I mean, I have a friend I was at school with. That's his business. He, he, he runs a huge call center. And that's what his business does. He, um, his clients are these different organizations, insurance, tracking, that use his services. He, he, he'll have people in his call centers. It's like um, outsourcing. So when you get a phone call from a, a tracking company, it's not necessarily that tracking company directly. It could be this friend of mine who owns this, this big um, call center agency. What's going to happen to that industry? I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. What Are they, are they going to send, a, hello, hello, Mr. Damon? No, it's just, it's just Damon Calvary. Um, before we continue this conversation, do you, can I have your permission to have this conversation? Are they going to do that now? Is that how, is it going to be different? Today is the 1st of July. This is where this whole Poppy Act has popped in. <laughs> no pun intended. Sorry. Poppy Act popped in. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's what's happened. So is today a special day? Is it a big day? Is it a thing? I don't know. Huh. I was talking sport at the moment. So I'm going to try to keep the sport in the same kind of area. Not that the Poppy Act is a sport. Saw a little, little interesting article. I had no idea that the tennis player, Philippe Gasquet, I had no idea he still played tennis. I didn't know he was still playing. He's not as old as I thought he was. Philippe Gasquet is 35. I thought he, uh, he's been around for so, so many years. He's 35. I thought, gee whiz. Now, Roger Federer is turning 40 next month. Roger Federer and Philippe Gasquet are meeting each other in the second round of Wimbledon. I think they're facing each other today. And it's going to be very, now. It's going to be interesting now. Philip Gasquet, he he was in the top ten in the world at one time. I mean, he's he made he's made the semi-finals of Wimbledon. He's made the semi-finals of other Grand Slams. He's made the quarterfinals of various Grand Grand Slams over the years. So he's been a top-class player. He's number fifty-six or number fifty-seven in the world now. Federer, I'm sorry, I can't remember what Federer is these days because he's missed so many tournaments. Um, so Federer and Gasquet are joining. Whenever I see just a little radio anecdote, I can't help it. I hope I just just bear with me. I can't help it. One of one of my little experiences in radio with when you have sports guys joining your show and you say to them, "Listen, yeah, you got to follow sport. If you're going to do sport on our show, you've got to follow sport. It's all about uh, credibility. You got to know what you're talking about." So the guy looks at me, yeah, looks at me like I'm a durst, like I'm a like speaking Greek, what the hell do you know, kind of thing. True's Bob, he called him Philip Gasket. Philip Gasket. And then after then I go up to him, I say, listen, bro, yeah, yo, you called him, I mean, Gasket. I mean, yo, 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 yo. If you're going to, and I go into this whole lecture, you know, listen, you know, you got if you're gonna you gotta have DSTV. I'm sorry, I know times are tough, but if you're gonna be a sports reporter on a on a national on a radio station, you gotta have DSTV. You've got to actually watch. You actually have to watch sport, believe it or not, because you've got to hear how names are pronounced. Because there's no there's no point only reading about it. You gotta you gotta know. You gotta you gotta say you gotta go. You can't go Gasket. You gotta go uh, Gasquet. Many years ago on 702, I, I won't mention names, shame, it's embarrassing. But they tried out some, some guy, he's, uh, instead of Guy Forget, Guy Forget, it was uh, Guy Forget. Guy Forget. Oh, sure. Anyway, I digress. 
staying on the sport because I want to keep a good structure. Yeah, staying in the sport. I saw an interesting thing now. Now ESPN, um, ESPN Africa. So I'm assuming that ESPN Africa is on DSTV. I don't know. So I see the article. It's this Channel Twenty Four um, uh, news service, which is part of the part of the News Twenty Four group, part of Media Twenty Four. So they they have this article on Twitter uh, talking about how ESPN Africa have a very exciting announcement. They're getting a show called Sports Center. Now, Sports Center is a hugely, hugely uh, popular show on ESPN. And ESPN is getting this show, Sports Center. And Sports Center, they, they're really great. They, they cover things very professionally. They cover it's all good editing, good presentation, not, nice actuality, good credibility. So it's, it's actually quite exciting. But what's here's the thing. In the article... They don't mention where is ESP, where are you going to find ESPN Africa? Now, okay, maybe it's obvious. Maybe it's obvious it is on DSTV. And uh, granted, I will acknowledge that. But if you're writing an article, if you're doing a news, uh, a news story, you've got to even state the obvious. You have to state the, like important information, even though maybe everybody knows it. To be honest with you, I, didn't, I don't know that for definite. I've never ever watched ESPN Africa. I don't. I've sort of got DSTV. I don't really have DSTV. I use a friend of mine's login, and I occasionally watch something. So I'm not familiar with the whole bouquet on DSTV. So how how can you leave out that information? And a similar thing happened last week. I mean, this is ridiculous. There's a new radio station that's been launched. In fact, today is their first day of broadcast. It's called Star Radio, or Radio, something like that. They're on the old frequency of, of Hot FM. So I don't even know what that is. Uh, Hot FM was, I don't know, look it up, Google. It's, so they, so, and then Hot FM has moved to 102.7, and 102.7 was used to be Classic FM in Johannesburg. So, Star, so the two new guys, Lucky and somebody, who used to be... Just, just, oh, just, uh, just hang on. My daughter wants to, to yeah, yeah. Uh, my nine-year-old daughter's got no studio etiquette, or in this case, study etiquette. So, um, yeah, online learning. That's that's what happens, and that's why I just out of interest. That's why my day starts late because I'm not waking up as early as I normally do. Because my uh, anyway, enough about me. So these two guys, they used to be on ninety-four point seven, Lucky and somebody else. So they put on Twitter, they go. Great announcement, great event happening on the 1st of July. We're on new breakfast show from 1st of July. And then it's hashtag, they do a couple of hashtags. And the one hashtag is Star Radio, but Star Radio is a new brand. It's a new product. No one's ever, ever heard of it. So do you think just putting a hashtag is good enough? So I, I had to Google and I saw, oh, uh, I found a full-on article explaining the, the new breakfast show and talking about this new radio station. Wouldn't have been, it would have made sense for them to include that article with their tweet with their tweet? It's bizarre. It's bizarre. You know, there's this weird, there's this weird thing in radio, especially in radio with certain with a lot of radio people. They think being cryptic and mysterious, even misleading, actually. They think that is clever. They think it. They think confusion and mystery is clever. They think it's going to intrigue you and make you curious and make you want to find out more. No, no, it doesn't do that. It's just damn, damn, damn annoying. It just is. I'm sorry. It's just. It's just annoying. Okay. There, I said it. Like you might notice that when you listen to this particular podcast, I, I try to contextualize everything. And sometimes I will say something that, oh, do of course you know that, but I can't help it. You got to, you, you can't just assume that, ah, anyway, just don't be so, don't be so damn mysterious. I was shocked. I really was surprised last night. I don't know about you. I didn't know this was in the, in the works. Bill Cosby. Can you believe it? Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable was released from jail. I had no idea that they were even working on this. Can you, can you believe it? 
He was sentenced to three to ten years in jail. He was up for parole a couple of months ago, but he refused because the parole um, conditions um, involved him taking part in rehabilitation or therapy, and he refused to do that as a prerequisite to be eligible for parole. But he's now been released, and I'm look and I'm reading and I'm reading. I'm trying to work out why he was, why he he was released and. Again, I hate to sound like another. It's like I'm a Karen. I'm complaining. I can't help it. I'm complaining all the time. I don't believe that one article that I read makes it easy and and sensible and user friendly to exactly work out why Bill Cosby was released. And I'm going to now try to say it to you, but I know that I'm still leaving it out because I had to work it out. So what happened was. Bill Cosby, there was a certain prosecutor that was after Bill Cosby at one time. Bill Cosby then took part in a deposition where he admitted certain things and he incriminated himself with certain things. But it was on the condition that it involved another case. Didn't involve his upcoming case. Then... The prosecutor changed. They brought in a second prosecutor. Then the deal fell away. And the evidence, the incriminating evidence, was then included in the court case. So, two years later, his uh, lawyers uh, got him out of jail. Isn't that just mind-boggling? And uh, what, is the, what, what does this say? To, to women all over the world. All over the, the solar system. Because, you know, might, there might be a female astronaut floating around at the moment. I can't keep up with who's floating around in the space. It's telling all women that uh, the world, the solar system doesn't care about you. It's just, um, just unbelievable. And to add insult to injury, you think Bill Cosby is going to become a recluse and shy away from the limelight and just think to himself, Shoo, God of lucky. You think he's going to do that? Be humble and just say, Shoo, okay, God of lucky, let's just uh, relax, keep a low profile, nobody needs to know me. And, uh, you would think somebody like O.J. Simpson would have also done that, but no. O.J.'s got a Twitter account. It's all over the place. He's very visible. He plays golf every day. Bill Cosby, I, re I reckon, mark my words, Bill Cosby's going to be back on the stand-up comedy circuit. And before you know, he, he's probably at this very moment um, looking, looking at uh, his material. He'll come up, he'll come up with, he's probably got new material while he was in jail. He was probably preparing stuff. And, uh, and people will go see him. There are people that support him that think he was innocent all along. And then there's the curious onlookers, the people that are thinking, wow, I gotta, I gotta see what this, I gotta just see this. I've never seen a sex predator on stage before. And and and, so, and that's that's the way it'll go. He's not going to just fade away into obscurity. No, 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 no. Will he do interviews? Don't think so. Don't think he'll do interviews. Think he'll stay away from that. Because uh, you know, someone might ask him a difficult question, like, uh, "Did you drug those women?" Well, I just want to no, he, yeah, no, he won't, he won't, he won't have, won't be able to, have, he won't have an answer for that. Definitely not. And I was looking at, uh, at um, uh, this, this whole article and Felicia Rashad, she's a, an actress. She played uh, Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable's wife, Bill Cosby's wife on The Cosby Show. She's like relieved, justice has been done, I always knew you were innocent. And then afterwards, she put in an apology. I'm sorry, I did not mean to be insensitive. I support um, and I empathize with women 
who are victims of, of sexual assault, etc. But then, why are you supporting Bill Cosby? Just, just keep shtum. If you kept shtum, if you didn't say anything that, you know, then you, you, nobody would have been the wiser. It would have been, you know, you would have been neutral. Just sometimes you need to just keep shtum. I see Edward Zuma. Uh, that's one of Jacob Zuma's sons. So it's not Duduzile or Duduzane. Duduzane is the, the Duduzane and Duduzile are the twins, boy and girl. This is Edward Zuma. He says that he would rather die. He's prepared to die. They must kill me if they think they're going to get my father in in jail. I will not allow them to take my father into jail. That's what he says. Because former President Jacob Zuma, he's got to he's got to um, uh, 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 hand himself over to the police station in Mkandla, and Kandla. And he says he's going to do it. Well, actually, he didn't say he was going to do it. Somebody else, he, he hasn't actually spoken publicly yet. People are speaking for him, I think. His spokesperson, someone, I can't remember his spokesperson. And it's going to be quite something because also the Mkonte um, OECs where Military Veterans Association, they are really marching uh, uh, towards Nkanda. They, they also, they're going to, they say they will not allow uh, their chief, their whatever, their leader, their president, to be to be taken away to jail. So that's quite something. And then we haven't even I haven't even mentioned Carl Niels. What's Carl Niels going? Is Carl Niels going? Carl Niels will be there as well. Because as you know, Carl Niels, I think he's the main. He's the what the president or the secretary of the Conte Sizwe Military Veterans Association. Sure, that's a mouthful, hey? I really have to concentrate. Got to be honest with you. I've got to really concentrate when I, when I give that. Sure. I know there's an abbreviation, but even that'll be more difficult to work out. I should actually have it written in front of me. I probably should. Yeah. So, a lot of action in, in Kanda. The cameras, I think the news cameras will be there, and uh, Kanda is the place to watch in the next in the next two or three days it'll be interesting it'll be interesting my prediction my prediction is president uh, former president jacob zuma i think he's he doesn't want any violence i think he's a man of peace generally i think he'll come out and he'll say friends just i i appreciate the support but you know allow these allow the police to do their jobs I appreciate you there for me and I'll be there for you. And then when I, you know, he'll give a whole thing, whole speech. Then he'll do it in Shiniwam, or Shiniwam, and it will, it will carry on. That's my prediction. And uh, Carl Nias, uh, I think Carl Nias will be in tears. And uh, Carl Nias will be crying on, on Um Shilozi's shoulder. It won't be pretty. It'll be entertaining, but it won't be pretty. So there we go. We're in. We're in for. We're in for quite uh, interesting times, just purely from that point of view. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't want to get excited. I don't want to get my hopes up. You know, you get these high expectations. I always don't get high expectations because it might be very disappointing. But you know what? Just but keep keep an open mind. It might there might be a lot of action. We'll, we'll see.